We just said Achenu Kol Beis Yisrael, thinking about our brothers and our sisters in Israel, Anasun and Batsara, who are in pain and in anguish, Uva, Shivya, who are in captivity, and our hearts and our minds are full of every day and every morning, every night, saying to Hillam and davening and praying for those who are in captivity. And of course, we have to. When we, we're seeing hostages getting released, and we can't even imagine what it's like for them and for their families. But there's also thousands, thousands and thousands of Jewish people, Achenu B'nai Yisrael, who are Batsara and Bashivya, who are in anguish, mental anguish, in pain, physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual pain, confusion, darkness, and Bashivya, who are captured, they're in captivity. The Gemara says, as far as spirituality, that we know that nobody would ever sin against God. Elim ke nichnas by rachtos. Gersh Edelstein Zatzali said that anybody who sins is considered rachtos, and people who sin and their life is full of rachtos. So, yeah, that's all it is. It's more rachtos. Nobody would sin against Hashem. Nobody would drop out of school. Nobody would choose a different derech. We believe. And every Jew believes, and we see coming out of Eretz Yisrael these stories of these, this tremendous bali tshuva that are happening, that the, the video I just sent around, that as they were shooting at him, he said he screamed Shema Yisrael. He said, I don't even know where, this, where these words came from. He grew up completely secular in Israel. They don't even know what, shem, what is it. Came from his neshama, and they did tshuva completely. It's... it's sometimes takes something, you know, when the gun is pointed at our face and, and it shakes us up. And so many, so many people, chayalim, that they're putting on tzitzis as a, as a shmira, and there's so many stories. And we know that it's confusion and pain and darkness, but we have so many kids and adults that are bashivi, that are captive by all kinds of addictions that trap them. People who want to die trapped by darkness, pain, depression, anxiety, all kinds of mental illness. They're trapped. They can't enjoy life. It could be a beautiful day. You could see a person that could be beautiful, good looking, handsome, everything's good, smart. They have every myla, but something happened and in their brain, they're constricted and they're in so much pain and so many of them numb their pain with bad behavior that temporarily numbs pain or hurting themselves or hurting doing drugs that, that numb their pain, how much do we have to go through? We have to think about all of these children at any age and all of their families. I got a call today about a young man, he's married, he says, my wife is a kid, is a kid in pain and she's not, she's not able to function and what do I do? Where do I go? We're married five years and all kinds of trauma that comes out later on in life. And people who are trapped and, and they're trapped by negativity, and they're trapped by, by all kinds of things that are beyond the regular healthy problems. Person can be negative. Like people say, oh, I know what depression is. I also get down. That's not depression. That cripples you. Anxiety, oh, I also get anxious. No, no, no. You're a normal person. There's a sickness of anxiety. Right? People, people are trapped in ways that are, make it so, so unfortunate for them, and, and, and life is so unkind to them, and they're not enjoying even the things that are good in their life because of tremendous, tremendous pain. And we're seeing this at all ages, we're seeing this in all stages. I don't think anybody can really properly explain why 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago it didn't seem to be here, but it has arrived. And the rest of us who are not in pain, instead of judging them and saying, why don't you just, you know, why, how come you don't, why don't you just say, thank God, I have no idea what you're experiencing, but I am here for you. Why do they have to open up their mouths without doing any research, without understanding or helping anybody and think that they know what everybody else should do? Because they were blessed either by never going through anything hard and they have basically a normal life. You know, there are some people that have a normal life and they, do not, they don't want to bang their head in the, world, in, in the wall and call it quits. So be happy that nothing happened to you or... We have people who went through a lot of hardship and somehow Hashem benched them with resilience. So they look at other people and they say, hey, I survived. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Be thankful. Say, Hashem, thank you. you look, look, I, that could have been me. Look, that guy's suicidal and that guy's a drug addict. That could have been me. That could have been me. Say, thank you. 
I, I should have, I was in the car, and the guy next to me got killed, and I didn't. Thank you, Hashem. You don't get angry at the guy. So if you have resilience, or you, you were lucky enough to find help, or you had maybe good, good um, a tough nature, and you were able to keep it together, and whatever it is, thank Hashem that you didn't shatter. But don't be angry or upset or let down at other people who are shattering. And you see them, if you have eyes, open up your eyes and your heart, like Moshe Rabbeinu, it says that, he opened his eyes and his heart to feel other people's pain. Why is the Torah telling that to us? To teach us that that's our job. And nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That's a famous quote. I didn't just make that up. So don't start giving your opinions and, and claiming to know what everybody else should do with their problems. Be there for them. Because that's really what you can do to help people. People who know that I have people who care about me, truly care about me. Give a guy a hug. Open your eyes in shul. And you'll see the people who are not so stable. Or they have, if you, can't, if you, if you could see pain, some people could see pain. Then you know who they are. But if not, you'll see. You'll see the struggling people, people going through a hard time. Just give them a hug. Just give him a hug. What a beautiful story came out this week. The tour guide of Bells. Bells in Eretz Yisrael built a beautiful building. And it's, it's magnificent and square. Everybody knows it. And under, underground, they have many, many, many floors. They have a thousand beds. So when Hasidim come for a yantif, they could sleep over. A thousand beds and kitchens to give food. And it's a little city underground. It's tremendous, tremendous. And this guy gives tours. I took a tour. And he wrote that one of the people... Remember this? It's a beautiful story. I sent it out this week. One of the guys there that was Chiloni, he was security for the tour. And he, he was saved. He was there and he was saved from the pogrom, basically, on October 7th. And he said, when the guy was ready to leave, he said, I had this overwhelming urge. And I just went over to him and I said, can I hug you? He never met the guy before. He didn't know who he was. But he went through this, and, and he just felt like, I need to hug you. Right? Now, we don't have to wait for someone who goes through such a tragedy that their family is kidnapped and murdered and, and, and the destruction that they went through. We can go to everybody who needs help deserves a hug. Everybody who needs help, you could say, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Let me know what you need. Maybe we can go out. Let's go, let's go out to eat. That's what's expected of us. That's what we need to do. Is we need to open our eyes. We need to train our children not to just think me, 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 me. Open our hearts and our minds, Leos Meitzar Aleim, to see the slavery that's going on outside with thousands of other people. And the schar that we get that is nothing compares to the schar we get for this says the Zayir HaKadosh, more than our learning and our davening, is going after these people and bringing them close and saving lives. That's what we're here for. The Chazanish said, everybody says in the morning, Shalai Asani Goy, that I wasn't made a Goy, says the Chazan Ish. But how much of a Jew are you? You want to know how much of a Jew you are? How much you care about somebody else's problems and pain how much you really care about other Jews. That's how much of a Jew you are. And I was thinking about it. We were together. I was together with Mandy. And we were walking. Remember this story? And we were in a different city. And right next to us, two Beis Yaakov looking girls on Shabbos walked past us. We said, good Shabbos, good Shabbos. And they, walked, they were walking faster. They were about a half a block in front of us. And a large car, like a uh, an es Escalade with like tinted windows turned very quickly in front of them. It was very scary. Cut them off. And he was just going into the parking lot. But I, it was like scary. And I, I said, can you imagine if the, the guy would have stopped then, the doors would have opened and guys would have jumped out of that Escalade and grabbed those girls and pulled them into the car. What would we do? How do you explain this to a guy? We didn't know them. We would have put our life at risk, as if it's my sister, my brother, my child, we would have ran. He would have gone running, I would have ran the other way. 
But he, we would run. What do you mean? Maybe the guy's a gun. Maybe the guy's a knife. You, about strangers. Explain to the world what a Jew is, what we are. Not a religion. We're family. Literally, that's when I realized, like, anybody that we don't know, right? Sure, in our home town, we'll cut you off and we'll do, do all kinds of bad stuff to you. But you see anywhere in the world, you see somebody in trouble, you'll do whatever you can for them. Why? Strangers. Who else has that? Who else has that? We're not related. We're 4,000th we're cousins. It's in the DNA that we would literally risk our lives for every single Jew in the world. That's something that nobody could understand. The Baal Shem Tev said, you cannot explain to a guy what a Jew is. And his grandson, Rebur Chumli Mejbir said, he said, and you can't even explain to a Jew what a Jew is. It's unfathomable what we are, the DNA that runs in our blood, the connection that we have towards each other, to give up for people, the tzedakah that we give, the chesed, no other place has that. You know how many gemachs there are? There's a gemach for everything in the world. There's a dirty diaper gemach, I'm sure of it. There's nothing that goes to waste. There's a gemach. They pick up food after every catering event and they give it out to poor people and to yeshivas. There's, there's 4,000 gemachs at least. Why? Because we care. We deeply care. But when you see other people in trouble, you know you would risk your life and run after that car and try to help out in any way you can and your heart would be pumping as if it's your relative because we really are one. And we have to remember that always. And we don't have to wait for tragedy. We have to remember that always, to hug everybody and to be nice to everybody and to be there for everybody and to be a person who's open. Don't just be like, I'm davening, I'm going to t -t -t -t. smile and open and listen to the tzaddikim who, who, they were very holy, but they had time for other people. Ramesha Feinstein said he gives over 50% of his day for chesed. And what he would have done is write svarim and done a lot of Torah and mitzvahs. What did he do? Chesed. So they asked him probably... You mean also, his Talmud, Rabbi Elimelech Bluth, Zatzal, wrote, wrote this. He said, probably you mean answering Shilas and Shuvas as a chesed, helping people. He said, no, I'm not counting that time. Just chesed helping other people. People who had a lot better stuff to do than we do spent so much of their time. And he said, just like Ramesha said, just like you have to give Meiser of your money, you have to give Meiser of your time. 10% of your time or 20% of your time should be going to helping other people. And I say that for every 10 smiles that God gives you, you should give Meiser. Make somebody else. Give, your, give a smile to someone else. For every 10 times you laugh, you make sure someone, you make them laugh. Give Meiser of your happiness, of your smiles, of things that make you laugh. Make other people happy. And that's the best part of hugging. And I'm not a big hugger, but you have to because people need it. And when you hug somebody, you're also getting back a hug. When you make someone else smile, you're also smiling. When you give Meiser of money, Aser Bishvil Shetis Asher. Everybody knows you're going to get more money back than you gave. You'll get more happiness back. You'll get more time in your life when you give up time to help other people. Find ways of helping other people. And at least be somebody that when everybody sees you, they feel a warmth and a closeness because that's who we are. And that's what they want to kill. And that's something that they can never extinguish. <laughs>